The Rancho Palos Verdes City Council voted on February 3rd to hire Douglas Wilmore as the new city manager. Mr. Wilmore has a distinguished career in both the private and public sector. For the last two years, he has served as the City of Bell's city manager, leading that city through a full recovery after the political scandal that struck in 2010. Mr. Wilmore says he looks forward to the new challenges as the city manager of Rancho Palos Verdes. I am truly excited. I was uh, just so lucky the way things worked out that the job was available at the same time that I started to look and I'm honored to be selected by the city council to be the next city manager. It's a beautiful peninsula. It's a great city with a very great history and my goal is to continue to try and find ways working with the council to make it better and it's a it's a great place to live and play and work and we want to continue to improve that. RPV has lots of wonderful things. I think lots of challenges when you look at uh, environmentally, when you look at keeping the city financially sound, when you look at continuing to try to find ways to do things more efficiently, more effectively, continue to find ways to reach out to the community, uh, to make sure that government is understandable to everybody, not not uh, just a few, but certainly everybody. So I think there's lots of things that we can work on and I look forward to working on with the council. I look forward to meeting everybody, everybody that I can. Uh, I have an open door policy with residents. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but I do. And I love to sit down and talk and I'll certainly be active in the community and a face in the community. and. So I look forward to being here for many years. The RPV City Council welcomed Mr. Wilmore and also thanked Deputy City Manager Carolyn Petru for being RPV's acting city manager for more than a year during the search to fill the city's top post. Wilmore officially starts in March 2015. Looking for a caregiver for a loved one can be a daunting task. RPV TV caught up with a local business that helps you take the next step in providing home care. A very touchy subject and it's approached with respect and caution you know and one of the big things to remember in terms of getting the conversation started is to not parent your parent actually you know you want to take that step back and and show them the respect of looking at things from their from their point of view and to to be the listener instead of try to to parent the parent Seniors here again, as, as we get older, there's uh, uh, the normal aging process, things start to decline, let's say, and uh, as that happens, then uh, some people need some help, so that's what we do. We can be a great resource for a lot of different things, so even if you just have questions, we're, we're here to help, and you know, you're going to contact us at any time, 24-7, to talk to us about what's going on and we'll go from there. Uh, First Light Home Care South Bay is an agency that assists anybody above the age of 18 with activities of daily living. Um, we have programs, everything from uh, transportation uh, for somebody, for instance, somebody who is going through a dialysis. Um, we would go and get them ready to go to dialysis, take them to dialysis, come back, and uh, after dialysis, they're, they're usually pretty wiped out, so we uh, can stick around for a little while, get them comfortable, make them something to eat, stuff like that. Um, new mothers or expecting mothers, um, we can go in, take care of some of the activities of daily living, everything from uh, lighthouse house keeping, laundry, cooking the family some meals, stuff like that. And then the, uh, the overall largest part of our business is actually with seniors. My role is the networking and marketing. I go out to establish the relationships that bring us the client referrals so we can take great care of people in our community. And I started with First Light because I, I've done research on the company and the opportunity came about to, to do the business side instead of caregiving myself, which is how I started with home care agencies. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to develop and expand my knowledge. I love making the difference. I love being able to help, you know, and to be that valuable resource when they feel like they don't have somebody to turn to, to, you know, to be that point. 
um, just, yeah, don't be afraid to reach out. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to be prepared to even sign up for service. You know, you, you need a resource in your pocket. To learn more about how we can help, you can visit us at southbay.firstsighthomecare.com and there's tons of resources available there as well as our contact information. Our main office phone number is 424-704-5330. In the month of February, First Light Home Care is providing a free service for seniors. They will come to your home and change the batteries in all the smoke detectors. Now you'll need to supply the batteries, but they will do the work and even bring the ladder all free of charge. There are over 15 parks in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and John Clayton is visiting all of them in his new series called Park to Park. Today he starts on Seacove Avenue at the Vanderlip Park and then he checks out a park that's right in the middle of Trump National Golf Club called Founders Park. Many people in our audience know that uh, I live in Palos Verdes, in fact I've lived here with my wife for gosh 38 years, but where on earth is this park? I I have no idea. So where is it? So it's right here, John, of course. <laughs> here we are on Sea Cove, and this is Frank Vanderlip uh, Park. It, um, well, what does it comprise? I mean, it, when I look behind us, it's just a gorgeously green field. That's exactly what it is. So this is another one of those really great pocket parks that our residents can come and enjoy. So it's about a half acre and it has wonderful walking paths. The view, of course, is spectacular. Nice open field, great place to bring your dog or your family or kids on the weekend. Always on a leash with the dogs, of course. <laughs> what about uh, things like picnics? I mean, it looks such a wonderful location. Um, can they... There's some wonderful picnic tables down closer to the bluff to enjoy the view. You bet. I think if I go back in my memory a long time ago my wife and I did come here and is it you can walk right along the cliff edge there? The views from the, the walking path really are spectacular. Everybody should come down and enjoy that. And how far does that go? Oh, it's about a half acre. Um, uh, so the walk around there is perhaps about a quarter mile. Yeah, the, you don't want to miss out on this one. This is one of those little treasures in Rancho Palos Verdes. This is really, I love that name, Pocket Parks. And this is certainly a pocket park. It's on a street that if you look at all the houses here, you think, well, my goodness me, it's house 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 but no there is a wonderful wonderful park so come on down to this wonderful pocket park it is well here its name right here we're talking with uh, Marcella Lemke of the RPV Parks Department and we're sitting in one of the uh, jewels of the parks uh, here in RPV so Marcella tell us a little bit about this wonderful glorious place we're sitting in well, it's 5.5 acres. It's available open to the public. It's a great place to come for picnicking or walking your dog or for children to toss balls and that sort of thing. There's also access to the beach down there at RPV Beach and on that side the uh, trails. What about this uh, little building uh, over there? Uh, is, that, um, is that possible for things like weddings? Yes, it's a gazebo actually. And actually at the moment we just host um, small stand-up ceremonies here and people can choose either to have it in the gazebo or out on the bluff which is at the north end of the park. And to get, to get permission to do that, do they have to come to the parks? Or because we're sitting, as long as people probably know, we're sitting in the Trump properties, do they have to talk to the Trump people or come to you? For the small stand-up ceremonies they just talk to me. We do a contract and I meet them here, do a site visit and so on. And if they if it's more than 16 people then they go through the Trump National Event Planning staff. What about things like parking? I know that one of the concerns of people is you know that sounds wonderful but what about parking? Well we have a public parking lot at the top of the street there. It has 45 spaces but people can also park on Trump National Drive on both sides of the street if parking is an issue. Since we're sitting in a sort of paradise location here in Southern California, is there any, in your view, any sort of special best time to come here? Or is <laughs> this being in Southern California, any time is a good time? Well, pretty well any time is a good time, but it's very um, popular on the weekends. So there are a lot of cars here and a lot of people in the parks. So if you can come Monday to Friday, of course, that's ideal. 
There are some beaches where dogs are not allowed, and I don't know if that's posted, but are dogs allowed? They are allowed in the park and on the trails, and definitely on a leash, not longer than six feet. They are not allowed on the beach at all. When you say six feet, <laughs> you mean the leash has got to be six yeah, feet? not the dog, the yeah. leash. <laughs> And remember to keep watching as RPV TV takes you from park to park over the course of the next year. And when we come back, it's that time of year when love is in the air and you'll meet a student athlete who's had a very successful season at PV High. The new ProLite laser can pick up a speeding car, even in traffic. Speeding is not only against the law, it's dangerous. Remember, don't speed, someone can get hurt. This message is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. What if a disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. The Palos Verdes Performing Arts is pleased to announce its 26th annual Valentine Ball fundraiser, which will be held on Valentine's Day this year. That's right, Saturday, February 14th at the Terranea Resort. This year's event will be an evening filled with show-stopping entertainment and a fabulous live and silent auction for items to bid on. Now, to purchase tickets, you can call area code 310. 544-0403. This is a night you will not want to miss and the tickets sell out fast so get your tickets early. Peninsula High School and Palos Verdes High Musicians are coming together again for the second annual Harmony Concert. The concert benefits both schools' music programs. It was created last year by four Peninsula service clubs to bring together students in harmony. The concert takes place March 17th, that's St. Patrick's Day at 7 p.m. at the Norris Theater. Tickets can be purchased at the Norris Theater box office. And coming up next, Mark J. Dottie takes you on a wild journey at the Warner Grand. Don't go away. The number of rescue operations off our peninsula's coast has been growing. We want to remind all residents to be aware of the dangers in our water and how to prevent a tragedy. Always know your location. Many beach areas tend to look the same. Make sure you have a phone in case of emergencies. Always swim with two or more people. Be aware of sharp rocks and riptides. Always adhere to posted signs. When you follow these rules, you take the danger out of your day at the beach. Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox, here to remind you of the importance of traffic safety near our schools. School zones are always 25 miles per hour. The school zone only applies when students are outside the school in the morning and the afternoon. Parents should always allow extra time when dropping off their children and should know the school's drop-off routes and procedures. Motorists should also focus on safe driving near schools. Some of the violations I see near schools are cell phones, speeding, double parking, seat belts, and child safety seats. Students should always remember to cross safely at intersections and not to run out in front of cars. When we follow these rules, we can all stay safe. In sports, we introduce you to a student athlete from Palos Verdes High who talks about balancing athletics and academics at the same time. When you're so involved in sports as you are, you know, you play lacrosse, you play football, how do you balance studying and playing sports? Because it takes up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I think many people think that uh, it's hard. It's it's harder to balance all this stuff. But for me, it actually it makes it easier for me okay. because because the fact that I'm constantly going, it makes me plan out what I'm doing and makes me keep on top of the things I'm doing. Whereas if I had more time to do things, I, I might start uh, slacking off and like, oh, I have time to do this. Uh, let me just uh, do something else before I do this. But 
having the sports and that foundation and then do the other things I do in the community and things like that, it really keep, makes me focus on keeping on schedule and really uh, focus on doing the job right and one thing, going back to the one thing at a time and focusing on one thing at a time and then moving on to the next thing and really keeping balanced in what I'm doing and keeping on task with what I'm doing. Interesting you talk about working in the community. Giving back is such an important part of football. What kind of things do you do? Um, I'm uh, involved with a bunch of different groups with my friends. All my friends, both on the football team and in the school, we're all very interested in helping the community and giving back as much as we can. So I'm in a group uh, called Los Hermanos, uh, which is a group of se uh, six other boys and I, and we just volunteer in different uh, events around the community or uh, char charitable um, programs going on in the community. And uh, it's really nice to just kind of get that fulfillment that so much, like we're so blessed here at PV that it feels nice to be able to give a little bit of that blessing to other people. And then uh, also um, just other gr groups like um, the Portuguese Band National Horse Show, mm -hmm. which uh, gives to the uh, Children's Hospital yep. um, of LA. So that that's really rewarding too. And uh, just anything like that where I can just lend a hand as much as I can it, uh, it's definitely fulfilling and being able to do it with my friends and them being so interested in it as well is something special. What happened during that season that was so successful for you guys? Uh, to tell you the truth I think what made our team so like special and like what made us go so far in the playoffs was our team unity and we really bonded as players and as friends and really as a family and we became a family and because we got so close like hanging out on the weekends spending time together not just on the football field but we did spend a lot of uh, time with each other on the football field as well but just really getting that chemistry down between one another um, that really helped us bring us to the championship and ultimately win the championship. Also, I um, felt like that we had a, a young team this year. Right. And I think our seniors did a great job of stepping up and really um, welcoming the younger players into it and really helping them. Not so much like, oh, this guy's trying to take my position, but oh, this guy's a great aspe uh, asset to the team and let's see what he can do to help our team. And really a great just all team, uh, all around team effort to, uh, to get the win in the CIF championship. Last snap of that game, last game of your high school career, what was going through your mind? Um, it was pretty cool because uh, it was we were taking a knee and I actually before the game had thought like what what would I do if it came down to the point where we take a knee and um, like how, what my reaction would be and I didn't really like know exactly what I'd do but uh, it was cool because I, I remember I took the knee and everybody everybody <laughs> everybody everybody knew that, that that was it and so I remember um, we all were in the huddle talking like guys this is it like we were all so happy and uh, ecstatic and then we went up to the line I uh, I took that knee and I remember everybody started charging from the sideline. I just took the ball and I chucked up into the air and I just felt so much like just happiness and just pride for what we had done and it was just a great feeling. Where did the ball go? <laughs> <laughs> to tell you the to tell you the truth, before it even came down I was already getting hugs from players from players around me, so I'm not quite sure. The ball the ball did its job, it was yeah, over. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Whoever got that ball, good for them. <laughs> it's a good ball and it's it's just a fun experience. The Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy recently hosted the Wild and Scenic Film Festival at the Warner Grand Theater in San Pedro, and Mark J. Dotty was there to capture all the excitement. We're here at the Wild and Scenic Film Festival at the Warner Grand in San Pedro. The Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy is holding this particular film festival today to inspire people to get outdoors. This particular festival happens in Northern California outside of um, Auburn and they've been doing it now for 13 years and they take it on tour and so a couple of people suggested last year that the Land Conservancy should apply to be a host sponsor and we applied to Patagonia for a grant to help us with presenting the festival and uh, we were selected and so we um, arranged to make this festival possible here at the historic Warner Grand Theater in conjunction with the 84th anniversary of the theater. We have a great turnout. There's probably at least 800 people here, which is wonderful for this festival. And there's about 75 films that are shown um, in Auburn, California as part of the festival. And today we have selected 10 films to screen here at the Warner Grand Theater. So it's sort of a slice of the festival, which is why we're calling it on tour. The response has been overwhelming. We have a lot of our longtime supporters and members here and a lot of new, new people to the Conservancy. So we're thrilled and delighted with the turnout. 
out and we hope that people will stay in touch with us and continue to come out for other events as well. Grand Vision Foundation was founded in 1996 to save this beautiful Warner Grand Theatre and we have been the friends group to the theatre ever since. We make improvements to the building, we also promote events here and help in many ways to keep the place up and running. It's a building that's celebrating its 84th birthday this week so we there's always a lot to do with the theater. Why do you think that the Land Conservancy chose the Warner Grand to show this film festival? Well thank you for asking me why the Land Conservancy would uh, choose this beautiful venue to have this uh, environmental film festival. I think it's because we're all about community building and preservation. The Land Conservancy focuses on the preservation of our natural environment and here we focus on the preservation of our cultural and historic environment. So we're a great combination. Yeah, the theater is gorgeous. Everything, like you just look around, you see all the little details that you don't see in theaters anymore. And uh, what do you think about the films that you're seeing so far? Anything really catch your interest? You want to comment? Uh, it makes, makes me want to go on some hikes and travel. I want to go to Yosemite now. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to take me to Yosemite with the dogs, so it'd be nice. So as you can see behind me, the Grand Vision Foundation has multiple pictures of them restoring the Warner Grand Theater. And I'm about to restore some of my calories with this delicious cake that the Warner Grand has to celebrate their 84th birthday. For RPV TV, this is Mark J. Dottie. And that will do it for us. From everyone here at RPV TV, make it a great day.